What's up everybody, this is Danny, and I'm back from San Diego where me and a couple of friends got to go out and check out Qualcomm's headquarters. And not only did I see how ridiculously fast 5G and R is, but I also got to go behind the scenes a little bit and go visit their anechoic chamber and see how they test sound and all kinds of other things. It's pretty impressive what they're working on for the rest of the year and how much tech they're actually working on. That could be a whole separate video. But most importantly, I got to check out the brand new Snapdragon 845 processor. Of course, wrapped in this black stealth shell. This is their reference device. It had a quad HD display, six gigabytes of RAM, and it was fully working, so it was awesome to play around with this for a couple of hours and run a ton of benchmarks. And this reference device is usually used for internal testing and to show their partners what's coming up, so I was geeking out a little bit. First time I've ever had hands-on on a reference device like this. But the reason I was really excited is because this chip is gonna be what's powering the new Galaxy S9. So these numbers here should give you a quick preview of how fast the Galaxy S9 is gonna be. First, let's start off with the Geekbench score. Pretty solid gains across single core and multi core. And for reference, here are some scores from the last generation Exynos on the Galaxy S8 on the left and the Snapdragon 835 on the right. So we are seeing the promised 20 to 25% gains across the board, which is nice to see. Single core went up from about 1800 to 1900 range on the 835 to 2457, which is solid. And the multi-core went up from 6500 range to close to 8500, so this is a significant jump. The biggest surprise is the render score. It is literally doubled from the 835, so that'll be interesting to see how that translates to overall performance. It's still not as fast as the newer iPhones with the A11 Bionic chip. These are still the fastest on the market, but the gap is getting a little closer. Next up is Antutu. I know a lot of people like Antutu scores, so it gets a total of 258,002. This is a significant improvement over the 205,777 score I got here on my Razer phone with the Snapdragon 835. Once again, showing that 20% or so improvement they claimed when they announced the Snapdragon 845. To further test the new Adreno 630 GPU, I ran 3D Mark Slingshot. The first thing that I did notice is that it was running much smoother than the phones running the 835 and even the Exynos, so I could see that right away just running the benchmark. The total score is 4,747, which is again a significant improvement over the 835, which got a score of 3,764, which is about another 25% gain. So this is going to mean that the Galaxy S9 will have a nice bump in GPU performance, so games should run much smoother. The next and final benchmark is the GFX bench test. This is the test that surprised me the most because this really shows you what kind of gains you're gonna get from the Adreno 630 GPU. The 1080p car chase off screen is up to 35 frames per second while the 835 shows 25 frames per second. The Manhattan 3.1 at 1440p shows 35 frames per second while the Razer phone shows 22 frames per second. Manhattan 3.1 at 1080p off screen shows 61 frames per second compared to the Razer phone's 42 frames per second. And the T-Rex 1080p off screen shows a crazy 151 frames per second up from the 116 frames per second on the Snapdragon 835. So while the CPU has nice gains as well, it seems like the GPU is where you're gonna get a lot of performance gain. And what's awesome about this is that there's lower power draw across the board too. So we should see battery life improvements across all devices. So after looking at all these benchmarks, it makes me really excited for the Galaxy S9 coming up here in just a few weeks and other phones that are coming down the pipeline in 2018 and beyond. So let me know what you guys think of the Snapdragon 845 and what you think about the performance gains. I will be covering the Galaxy S9 very soon in the next couple of weeks, so make sure you subscribe to the channel for a lot more coverage of that. And let me know if you like these benchmark videos because I'll do a lot more of them. Uh, I think a lot of people don't focus on benchmarks as much as they used to. They care more about real world performance, but benchmarks can give you kind of a glimpse of what that phone's gonna perform like in the future. So thumbs up if you guys enjoyed this. Subscribe to the channel if you want more, and I will see you guys in the next one.